this gang. Yay. Uh, five on the floor. Ride for my dogs. Where is the thing? You can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buck said, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor playing. Got an all band. Y'all seen the block. Stop the one hand. And Pat, we trust. It's power, have the guts. We here to bring the heat. Y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, welcome to Five on the Floor live edition on the YouTube channel. Also catch it afterwards on the podcast feed. We recommend that you subscribe everywhere so you don't miss any of our content, particularly with the play-in or the playoffs coming up. Today's floor plan, I got Greg Sylvander. You can follow him at Greg Sylvander. I got Alex Toledo. You can follow him at Tropical Blanket. I got Brady Hawk. You can follow him at Brady Hawk 954. I'm kidding. Still 305. You should change it at this point. We know where your heart is, Brady. Uh, and it's 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 right here with me in the 954. Anyway, the floor plan we're going to discuss tonight. The Miami Heat get to 41 wins on the season. They win a game that really shouldn't have been in doubt at any point, but was a little bit in the first half. And, of course, they lost to this team the last time, so we don't take anything for granted around here. This was not a 60-point win like against Joe Cronin, but this was a 12-point win. DeLon Wright gets his revenge, 119-107 to against the Washington Wizards. We'll get to the star of the game, as we always do, or as we call it the game of the night, the play of the night, and also the injury report as we go forward. But I do want to just reflect on the significance of this because we shouldn't let this pass. And we looked this up before the episode started and we'll take some of your comments here. Uh, and if you hear that on the podcast feed, you know, again, you join us live and you get a chance to ask us questions here. Also, of course you can join off the floor. That's our discord for two ninety nine a month. And you get to ask us questions there all day long. And we're already being told shut up and pod. That's by one of the people who was with us on playback. They're not actually being nasty to us. That's what we said. They just tell us to shut up and pod. That's all we got to do around here. Uh, but uh, the significance of this is, is 41 wins. And, we should not look past this because, Greg, uh, the Washington Wizards have been below 500 five of the last six years. Uh, Sacramento didn't make the playoffs for 15 years. The Knicks went through a tremendous rut of losing seasons. Detroit can't even see a winning season from where they're at, and this has been years. And the Miami Heat now have had only five losing seasons. Five. Since Pat Riley took over in 1995 five that is we're now 29 years later they've had five losing seasons and this ultimately will be a winning season i don't think i'm jinxing it too much to say miami will win at least one of its last eight this isn't the season everybody wanted i think a lot of people thought this could be a 50 win year i said 47 they still are kind of in range of that Uh, at this point they go six and two down the stretch but again just to to not to, to be competitive every year it, it is significant it, isn't it i mean I, and again this is not carrying water but it, it matters it does because at least you know if, if when you head into seasons like you saw how listless the washington wizards just looked that entire crowd was out to lunch half of it was heat fans any damn way and it was barely full and that's a franchise that can't get it together and you see that the heat are you know, basically the opposite of that. So just, you know, high level when we kind of zoom out from the game for five seconds, it's just, it's significant that you can go that long and be that successful, be that competitive. Everyone has to remember the goal here is to compete for championships is it, to win championships. Absolutely. But you want to be able to compete. And the first step to that is being a above 500 team, being a playoff team, the heat of, you know, been very consistent in that way and tonight was a night that you know i personally love seeing the three-point shooting come back they shot 39 percent tonight so that starts to um make me feel like okay they're getting ready for playoff time it's not a great opponent but i'll take the result all day yeah and eric spolcher said before the year we want to be one of those teams we believe that we're one of those teams i don't know that they're one of those teams because when he talks about it in that context he's not talking about one of those teams that'll finish over 500 he's talking about one of the teams that can compete for a championship and i do think that you greg you hit on it there because this has gotten um this as juan martin 
Uh, Ladonio says, just left the arena, truly taken over by Heat fans, LOL. And that that is kind of the point here. Like, uh, again, you go to Washington, I've covered many games there. That's a Heat home game, uh, as has Orlando been for years, as has Atlanta been for years, as has Brooklyn been for years, and some other franchise. And that is because of the consistent winning. I mean, people don't want to attach themselves to losers. We talk about uh, even in our market, okay, the Marlins have started 0-4. Everybody's given up already. Four games into a 162-game season. The Panthers have made the playoffs four straight years now, which is a tremendous achievement because five straight years, actually, but four under under uh, Zito as the general manager, considering that before Zito, they made it six times in their history, dating all the way back to 19, uh, ni- all the way back to 1993. So, uh, and again, the Dolphins, we don't even want to talk about the Dolphins. So it, 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 what, what the Heat have accomplished is significant, again, even if, they haven't played like a contender for most of the season. But let's get into the specifics of this game. Um, Alex, uh, ring it up because one guy stood above the rest today. We'll talk about him. And now on Five on the Floor, it's time for the Gamer of the Night, sponsored by Rock Esports Center, the place to eat, drink, and play all day. Host your next birthday party with them. Located at 15305 South Dixie Highway in Palmetto Bay, they've got a 5,500-square-foot state-of-the-art center equipped with all the high-end power. Play all-day passes, available for just 25 bucks. but if you mention five reasons... It's just $20. So mention five reasons or five RSN. You get to play all day for $20. And now, the gamer of the night. I mean, there's only one choice here, isn't there, Alex? Um, 27 points, 11 of 19 from the floor. Uh, that's 6 of 8 from 2, 5 of 11 from 3. We'll get into that a little bit more, I'm sure. Uh, four rebounds, two assists, not a big... Uh, assist night. I actually, uh, I, I've actually picked this guy as a prop today for scary, change. It worked. It, Terry, it, it, scary, it worked out. Terry. He's rounded in a shape, right, Alex? Terry Rozier? Absolutely, man. I think he's gotten comfortable over the past little while here, and you've seen these types of games come every now and then. Like, obviously, there was that one versus Cleveland where he, he hit the, the the two shots to, to basically win the game and ice yeah. the game. And I think just his game is showing out more like some of that Hornets Terry that we were kind of asking for when he got here and maybe was deferring a little bit too much for our, for our liking, but um, he is more than willing to take over in the spots where he needs to. And tonight, man, offensively, easily their best player. Okay. Uh, is my mic back? Sorry about that. Uh, anyways, offensively throughout the night, I thought he just kind of kept them going. And it was a point where Jimmy, I thought, just wasn't doing much throughout the game. Like he had a nice start to the game, but Terry was the one who just over and over again, when things weren't going right, would just go over there and give you an isolation bucket. And that was part of what you were looking forward to, right? It was like the self created scoring, the shooting has kind of, you know, come out a little bit more than it did when he first got here. We've already seen the pick and roll stuff with Bam. Like he, he, and also the, the, with the shooting, like the catch and shoot has gotten better too. He, he seems a little bit more in rhythm there. And, you know, you're kind of starting to see all the different aspects of his game that you wanted to see. And this happening right before the playoffs, right? Like these types of games versus the Blazers and the Wizards, perfect games to get going, get your confidence up. They have to win these games um, because of the standings. And honestly, he's been a huge, just a huge part of it. And, like just imagining a world where they did it. And again, I'm not trying to hate on Kyle here, right? But if they, they didn't trade Kyle Lowry for Terry Rozier right now, I know Kyle has always stepped up when guys were out and, and you know, salute to him for that. But I think it would be really, really tough right now without what Terry's giving you because there's no Tyler and they've needed somebody else to step up there considering that Jimmy has just been so up and down in, in this regular season. And Bam had a great game too. I thought he was really solid, uh, but... Terry was the guy on office that just kept getting them out of tough situations and keeping them away from an unnecessary clutch game versus the Wizards. Yeah, it almost was an unnecessary clutch game. Uh, Brady, you've talked about the types of threes that he's taking now. Um, can you elaborate on that a little? Yeah, I mean, I feel like when he first came here, it was a lot of the contested pull-up type threes that were kind of mixed in. And I know we talked about it before. I, I mean, more than the efficiency, more than the points, more than the amount of threes he he hit tonight. I think the fact that he took 11 threes matters probably more than anything because we talked about he, he had to fix his shot profile. Like there was too many things that were kind of all over the place where 
He had to eliminate some of those long twos that were kind of step back, tough long twos. And he's going to shoot a couple of those because that's his game. He's just a rhythm, uh, tough bucket getter. So he's going to take them. But you had to mix in a lot more threes, especially without Tyler. Uh, and we've seen him him do that consistently. And then this last game against Portland, as Alex mentioned, it was a lot more off the catch. All I, I talked about it before. It was like all six threes of his. He didn't take one single dribble, which is a, such a different feel than what we saw when he first got here, that he's kind of finding his flow within the offense. And at this part of the season, they're trying to get, you know, they're setting up those spot of threes. They're working him off pin downs. They're working off different spots, using him, uh, you know, fading into the corner at different times. Like they want to get him those shots because they know Jimmy's usage is about to go up. They know Tyler's going to be returning here eventually. So he's not going to be able to just play this on-ball game all day in this isolation bag. They're, he's going to get into it when they need him to, but it's not going to be the entire game. So his ability to kind of mix it up a little bit and kind of you know have the on-ball ability but also be able to bury kind of some of these spot-ups is kind of the important thing here. And then the, some of the, I, I think some of the spot-ups, I mean, some of the pull-ups in the mid-range he's been taking over these last th- like three or four games or so is important just because – remember that first week or two where he was just like not taking those, like he was passing, he was forcing it to Bam and Bam's kind of looking around like, okay, I have two guys on me because they know you're not shooting. Uh, And it gets to a certain point where he just had to take some of those shots. So they would start respecting it and start pulling over a little bit more, kind of like what we saw with the Tyler Bam pick and roll. So we're seeing that a little bit more. I think Terry and Bam's connection is kind of growing. And and Ethan, we talked about it, you know, on the playback earlier where we were talking about rotations of the playoffs where we said, you know, certain mixtures, how do they stagger? I think they're hitting the point where when Tyler returns and you kind of stagger certain guys, Tyler and Jimmy are going to be glued and Terry and Bam are going to be glued more often than not. That's kind of the way I see it. I I think they're hitting the point in the season now where Terry and Bam are kind of the guys that are going to want to play off each other. And look, they've started running Terry, Bam, pick and pops. (laughs) That's the point they're at. Like they're just trying stuff at this point because Bam's been shooting more. So I think that'll be an interesting thing to see because they're going to keep Ty- Terry and Tyler to let them anchor certain lineups as, as guards. But I think the interesting part is I think they're going to lean with Bam to Terry more than maybe we we originally thought. See, that's completely opposite because we always thought uh, in a lot of ways Bam and Tyler were stapled together because of the pick and roll that they were running and that we'd see a lot of Terry and Jimmy together so that uh, Terry could kind of take some of that burden off of Jimmy. But, I, but you may be right about this. But I, I do think, Greg, that the – The Terry emergence here does set a chain reaction on some other things because now that you know it's in there with him and he's willing to show it, uh, I mean, Tyler's usage, I don't think if and when he comes back, I always throw the if in there. It just can't be anywhere near where it was, and it's not a Jimmy thing at this point. It's also a Rozier thing, and I also think we've talked about this a lot, but uh, Rozier and Duncan just fit together uh, as a backcourt, I, I believe. And I know Duncan didn't have a big shooting night. We'll, we'll get into him a little bit more. I mean, he was two of seven from three, didn't produce much more. It's just good to see him out there, to be honest, and, and creating some of the spacing. And again, just being comfortable. Okay, Duncan's back. And I, I feel like there's, I feel like with this team, like it helps them relax. Okay, well, okay right. we've got our shooter back. We can run the actions we used to run. Doesn't have to hit five, six threes his first game back or do a lot of the things that we've seen him do in terms of his floor game. But, uh, you know, this is trending towards we're going to have some really interesting conversations when and if Tyler's back because Rozier has sopped up uh, a lot of that usage. Uh, I think they wanted him to do that. And he's done it more efficiently of late than he did earlier. I'm not saying he's better at all of it than Tyler. There's certain things Tyler is better than him and certain things he's better than Tyler. But there is some duplication there. Um, and I, I do think it changes the equation, doesn't it? I mean, I, yeah, I, the I'm, fact that we're seeing the Terry Rozier they traded for. I think that we're, we've now reached the point where Tyler Hero is most likely to come off the bench and they're going to try to figure it out from there. Um, and I wouldn't have said that a few weeks ago. So, like, that's a, a complete change in complexion there i think it's good for the team it doesn't mean that he'll have a diminished role or be limited if he's healthy enough to play they'll figure out a way to get him involved i just think it's going to start off the bench i think duncan and terry have solidified themselves as a good offensive unit um at least and they provide enough aggressive play enough off ball movement and enough shooting around your best players so to me that's the way that they're going to go right now and uh, Tyler will have to figure things out coming off the bench, which isn't easy 
in the midst of a playoff run. So we say when and if it's a big if of when Tyler Hero, um, you know, if, if he returns. Yeah, and uh, we're going to talk about those games as they're coming up, but there's really three that jump out at you, the schedule. There's Philadelphia, which knows they're getting Embiid back now. Um, they may not lose a lot the rest of the season. Of course, the huge game in Indiana uh, and also the game against the Knicks on Tuesday night, which Alex Brady and I will be at, which should have a pretty damn good atmosphere, uh, no matter who the Knicks have in the lineup for that one. All right, uh, Alex, let's get to the play of the night. We'll talk off of that and then uh, and then continue here. And now it's time for the Insurance by Lynette Play of the Night, sponsored by insurancebylynette.com and A Aggressive Insurance Agency. You can reach out to our friend Lynette at 954 581 8800. That's 954 581 8800 or insurancebylynette.com. That's insurancebylynette.com with two N's and two T's. Your best play for auto insurance, homeowners insurance, condo insurance, life insurance, or a retirement program. Reach out to Lynette at insurancebylynette.com. All right, I'm going to get to a tweet here in a second because uh, a, a certain, a, well, I'm not going to say it. Uh, the DJ Khaled lookalike has decided to jump in on one of my oh, tweets. Wow. So we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that in a second. Before we do, uh, we got a play of the night. Um, uh, Greg, you were suggesting the Terry three with two seconds left before the half. I feel like that was, I mean, that was a pretty clutch shot. Alex, you got one? What about that first quarter one where he had Marvin Bagley touching earth? That was beautiful with the, with the change in direction and whatnot. So the theme of the night is Terry Rozier balled out. I think that that's, that's that. I'm more interested now you're saying that there's a tweet going around. Uh, Let's hear that live. (laughs) Let's, let's, let's go for it here. Um, so I tweeted uh, during the game, and you guys tell me if you think this was an unreasonable tweet based on the fact that one Butler was scoring and it wasn't the one who's being paid $45 million by the Miami Heat. Uh, it was somebody named Jared Butler for the Washington Wizards at the time. Uh, I So I tweeted out during the game, it's time for the Heat to start caring about this game. They were down at the time, by the way, uh, particularly their star. Uh, does he does does Ernie have like is there like a bat signal? It's like a butt signal, right? Like was it, we're gonna call it that, like the butler yeah, yeah. signal. I probably shouldn't have framed it that way, but it's like a little light <laughs> that goes above his apartment uh, or above his his courtside seat, where he he quote tweeted me with uh, four the emojis of the four laughs. Uh, gotta love the flip flopping. Which by the way, this is funny coming from this particular account, considering like. Do you do what should I do with accounting of all the flip-flopping that goes on from this particular account? Played the exact same way last game, only shot the ball four times, one by 60, not a single tweet or mention. So first thing, I didn't even say their star, but I guess he's assuming who I'm speaking of there. Um, it's fairly clear. The fact that we can identify who the star is means that, yes, that's the guy who needs to get going. Like, it, I didn't need to say... Jimmy Butler, I say the star, and all of a sudden, like I said, the the butt signal goes up, and and all of a sudden, uh, Ernie has to jump in on this. I can tell you that others kind of jumped. I'm not that I need defending here because I don't think I I don't think there's any way to counter this. Their star needs to play better <laughs> in some of these games. Like, what are we talking about here? Like, I, I'm, again, as I said on playback, I'm not disparaging anything Jimmy Butler's done here for the past four years lifting this franchise back up from the white side dark ages. Okay. I get it. He's been tremendous. He basically, t- and I did say S dot saying here in the chat that I said, Jimmy would end up with 17 points. What did he end up with? 17 points. Okay. Um, I'm not, I'm not undermining anything that Jimmy has done. I'm just saying, and I've said it over and over. I'm going to keep saying it. Like there's been too many games. He sleepwalked this year. That's all. Like I, I, I don't That's have fair. a problem with some of the, with the games he's missed, but when he plays, you want to see your best player play with energy because this team feeds off of his energy, and it hasn't happened often enough. And by the way, I'm not the only one who believes this. Okay, no nope. people people inside the building believe that at this point, and 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 if he turns it on in the playoffs, all will be not it has to be forgiven, but all will be forgotten. Correct. But but right now, okay. Uh, that's where we're at. And 21 Alex, who went after me on the playback on this, uh, who may actually be Ernie, um, uh, said, has Jimmy <laughs> earned that? 
he has. He's also earning a lot of money to lead this team. They look to him for energy. When he doesn't bring it, they don't bring it. That's the, the consistent pattern this year. And whether it's Washington or Milwaukee or Boston, we've talked about it after many games this year that we get out of the game and we kind of wonder what the hell happened? Where was Jimmy's head at tonight? And for about the first half, am I wrong about this? Uh, Greg was, where was, was he good in the first half? Not particularly engaged. Um, but I think that he did show signs in the second half that made it feel like he cared a little bit more still no steals. That's my metric that I always watch. I'm going to use accounting stat and get real simple about it. Um, but still there were moments there at the end where he helped put him away. There were some clutch plays. He made some good passes, uh, but it isn't the Jimmy Butler game of, you know, you just, there's the sound bites floating around about how do I become the greatest player in the world? All of a sudden, like to Chris Haynes and stuff, like you just, you got to understand what comes with that is some noise. And so this is the noise that comes with it. Doesn't mean he's not going to turn it on. I think that he's highly capable of turning it on and, Like, just nope. Break. We're losing by one by one here tonight. We've already lost Brady. Okay, Alex, jump in. Am I? Am I? It is was my tweet? <laughs> yes. It's it's a, apparently Ernie is hacked us or somebody. They know a hacker over there in Jimmy's camp because I don't know what's going on. Uh, I'm I'm assuming I'm next, but uh, until until I get hacked and out of here, I agree with you. Like I just think it's hard for them to sustain. You know. Um, sustain throughout a game without Jimmy giving you those efforts in like a more stable way. I feel like he gives you spurts in the regular season. A lot of times you'll see in the first quarter, he comes out, you know, looking pretty good. And then after those first few minutes, you just kind of don't hear from him again. I feel like tonight was kind of similar. Um, I thought he started the, the game decently and didn't really play that well again until later in the second half. And, you know, it was very much needed, right. And very much appreciated. Um, but yeah, that's just the case. And honestly, all I could think about after you started talking about how, you know, Ernie said that you're flip flopping and it, it just made me laugh. And I'm like picturing now like a Photoshop with the both of you wearing like flip flops. And Mike just went. He got you, too. Oh I, know, I don't know what's got, going on today, man. He, he's they, they got Brady's camera. They got Greg frozen up. They got your mic. We're going to take a brief break here. Actually, we planned this beforehand. And then we'll come back after it with the injury report. All right, let's dial it up, the latest injury report, other than my bruised ego. And now it's time for the official Five on the Floor injury report, sponsored by our friend Eric Rubenstein, the personal injury attorney. Born and raised in Lauderdale, Florida, lives in Miami, went to St. Thomas. He's a South Florida guy and a huge Miami Heat fan. But the important thing is he can help you get your money that you deserve when something happens to you. So reach out to our guy, Eric Rubenstein. Again, ericrubenstein.com or ask about me. I got you on Instagram. And now the injury report. All right, let's get to the injury report here. Uh, Kevin Love made the trip, did not play again. I believe Ira asked. We had our guy Pablo up there in Washington. We appreciate him covering for us again. Uh, FIU uh, uh, faithful down here from Miami up there in D.C. So uh, covered another game for us. Uh, you can check out his work. I've been tweeting it out, but uh, he did get a chance to ask Spo a couple questions. But he told me that Ira asked specifically about Love, and uh, and so we'll get the answer on that. But it, again, it doesn't appear that there's an injury keeping him out. I just think Spo is just uh, he's rolling with Thomas Bryant in these games that he can, getting Kevin back acclimated to everything, and then going to have Kevin available for this final push. Um, Duncan didn't appear to be any issues um, tonight, so that's a positive. Tyler. Really no update. I would think that uh, a, a home game against the Knicks would probably be a tough spot to throw him back into, but who knows? The Heat don't usually make decisions based on the opponent when it comes to this stuff. It's when the guy is ready. So who knows? We might see Tyler on the floor on Tuesday night. I'm not guaranteeing it, but I'm also not ruling it out uh, as Brady camera tries to pop in here. Brady, have a good night. Relax. Happy Easter. You're good. We got your Rosier comments. Just go fight with Ernie on the timeline. <laughs> Um, but, uh, uh, it's Tyler. So we could see him Tuesday. Other than that, uh, Caleb Martin, uh, this latest injury, what, what is this now? It's a foot again. Like a he foot was nursing ankle. it in the last game. Um, and I think if this was a playoff game, he would play. 
So, no, I don't think anyone should be concerned. All right, but in the meantime, by the way, uh, Haywood Highsmith played well again tonight. I think we should note that. Um, only two of six for three, uh, but 29 minutes, uh, 10 points, four rebounds, and is kind of settling uh, into that role. All right, let, let's take a couple of the comments here uh, from, from some folks before we, we get out of here. Um, uh, let's see if anybody has uh, – Jimmy's pacing himself by playing in moments. I, perhaps, Tony, I, again, I, I understand the overall philosophy of him getting ready for the playoffs. I haven't flip-flopped on that. What I've said this year is there are times that it seems like his team needs him to hit the accelerator, and he has it. And they're not in a position right now with eight games left where he can wait. He just can't. And there are different rules that apply to your superstar – that is applied to others on the team. We are not focusing on Caleb's energy at every moment, even though he always tends to bring that. He doesn't bring the skill level that Jimmy brings. But with Jimmy, it is about energy. We see it mostly on defense. And I, like I said, there are some, like his buddy, uh, who are obsessed with shot attempts. I'm not obsessed with shot attempts. We talk about the other stats. If he wants to listen to us here, he'll hear it. It's the steals. It's the general act, the deflections, the activity on defense, uh, the free throw attempts. That's the stuff that I think they feed off of. It's not necessarily, we're not asking him to chuck 25 shots, but he just wants to be contrary and change his mind every day and then call me a flip flopper. Uh, S. Warrior comes in here. He had an earpiece streaming playback. FYI, Jimmy will turn it on. He doesn't need to in these types of games. Perhaps he didn't need to against Portland. He was a plus 42 in 25 minutes. We did uh, acknowledge that at the time. Apparently that that got uh, that got missed. Um, and then uh, 21 Alex is asking, don't you think Jimmy is deflated that Tyler is not available? I, I, I can't get in guys' heads on that. Again, we, we've had a discussion. Greg, we've talked about it. There was a feeling there was going to be a high-level change this offseason. It didn't happen. How that has affected somebody the entire year, we won't find out until later. Correct. Um, right. So I, I don't, you know, I don't know. That's a question we get asked a lot. I don't know. I, a lot of people would like Tyler to be available. Tyler would like to be available. Yeah. The Heat <laughs> so, definitely would like him to be available right about now. Right, exactly. So that's that's where at. Um, and this one comes in from Lauren Lewis. It's not the big picture right now, but doesn't Spo need a lot more fifty win seasons? I, I really don't. He's not going to get one, obviously, this year. The most they can win is forty nine. Um, they're over under before the year. By the way, was forty four and a half. I had him at forty seven. They're probably are going to clear the forty four and a half. I would hope so at this stage. Now that they've they've got the forty one, they just need to go four and four. Um. Brady's asking, we're answering questions. How do you fix the camera? I'm not the one to ask about that. I'm not, I'm not the one to ask. I'm the last one to ask. Um, flip it around. Apparently I'm a flip-flopper. So just flip the camera around and then that'll work. Uh, he's not going to win 50 this year. I don't think he cares about that or coach of the year awards at all. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, he he's, His legacy is set. His salary is set. <laughs> it's, it's There's... It's not about winning 50 games for him anymore. Um, sometimes I wish it was because uh, I these regular seasons, if they drove them a little harder during the regular season, not quite Pat-like, but a little bit more, I think we'd have more enjoyable podcasts, but it's just not what they care about, right? Uh, Alex, you want to close tonight? You can close. Go ahead. Sure. Yeah. sure, why not? Look, honestly, I thought today, like, it wasn't, there was no nothing inspiring from today other than Terry just kind of playing his game and looking like street ball Terry out there at times. It's he's had a, a nice little layer of like just offensive chaos in a good way that I've appreciated. And like I said before, uh, they really much like very much needed, especially without Tyler and, and the other guys that they've missed. But um, you know, I, I do think when it comes to hitting 50% of your mid-range shots, hitting about 40% of your threes, like that's not the type of stuff that the Heat typically do. I mean, the mid-range stuff has been kind of up and down this season. It was better last season. Um, so it was good to see them just having a day where, like, their, their jumpers are falling down. It's not like the Wizards provide a ton of, you know, defensive resistance. But them going out there and taking care of business, like you said earlier, you can't you can't take that stuff for granted. Because, like, I, I was talking about it with Brady before the Blazers game. And I was so wrong. So I'll say it on here, too. Like, I was worried that they were going to lose that Blazers game. <laughs> Not because I thought the Blazers were good or anything. Because, God, that team without the guys that they were missing that night, probably the worst team I've seen all season. But, yeah, I, I just I had a was. Pretty, like 
based on the, the Heat's track record at times that they lose one of those two games you're supposed to win, probably the PTSD from the last Wizards game. But um, it, it's good to see them take care of business here because, you know, we talked earlier about how they're, they're scheduled to end the season. It's kind of easy coming down. Most of that stuff is out of the way. Like now the, the only like quote unquote easy games you might have left are the two Raptors games to end the season and the Hawks who are still playing without Trey Young. Other than that, like you've got the Knicks coming up, the Sixers without Embiid still, but that's that's a competitive team. You've got the Mavs coming up. Uh, I, I feel like I'm missing another one here, but regardless, like the oh, and and the Pacers. I don't remember. I don't know if I said that, but like you've gotten most of those easier games out of the way, and now it's really like crunch time because I think like I know they don't care about seating, but are they really gonna like not care about it and put themselves in a position where they have to go through the most rigorous? run just to get back to the finals when it's like what what do you do this all season for this maintenance this maintenance plan if you're gonna go into this and be like oh well let's let's take the toughest road possible it's like is that is that the best plan so i mean if they can win some of these big games and put themselves in a position to play frankly a worse team in the first round um still good teams right whether it's new york or cleveland like they just they've got to do it they've got to care the Indiana game is the tell for me. If if they if they if they care about this, they'll they'll play with high energy and Spolster will shorten the rotation, and he'll play the guys. I'm expecting another the playoff chance. rehearsal against the Knicks on Tuesday, so, by the way. So win one, we'll see. But every time again, every time we talk about okay, Jimmy's going to bring it. That's not the game he does. So I, I I'm curious to see what happens on Tuesday. I will just say here. I know I said I'd give you the last word, but I'm looking under my tweet, which I tweeted by the way with the Heat losing this game. And I'll tell you, the fans agree with me at that point. I just, um, is Butler playing or what? It was time for that about six weeks ago. I can't say it enough. If Jimmy doesn't morph into playoff Jimmy, when the time comes, his regular season will come off way worse. I mean, that's, you know, I, I, th I think, honestly, I think the fans are further on this than I am, okay? I, I think they are. They just, they just want to see, they know what he can be. They just want to see him be 85% of that. Most of the time, nobody's telling them to take 25 shots. All right. Uh, Discord. thanks to Greg. Thanks to Alex. Thanks to Brady. Discord. Somewhere in the net in the nether world. Well, what was I supposed to say? Am I supposed to close with? Oh, Discord <laughs> off the floor. Two dollars and ninety-nine cents per month. Link right here in the I did that already. Didn't, no, I didn't. Uh, in the description on the top of the uh the Twitter feed and all that good stuff. Thanks to everybody who was with us all night. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll be back on playback tomorrow. Have a good one.